everyone. I'm Suzanne Mulligan and I'm here with Karina Bauer. Karina, you've been the CEO at IMEX for 12 years and you've seen huge changes in our industry and in the world. We want to talk today about women as leaders, the importance of resilience and empathy, and especially your leadership journey to get here today. So let's start with that journey. You have grown up in the meetings industry as the daughter of our chairman, Ray Bloom. And I always love when Ray tells the story of you hosting tables at the gala dinner in Frankfurt as a young girl. Could you tell us a little bit about your journey to IMX? Do you think it was always a given that you joined the family business? Um, certainly not a given. I have to say, you know, my father never put any specific pressure on me to um, join the business. But of course, he was an entrepreneur. He set up many businesses, you know, as um, as I was growing up. So I always sort of knew in the back of my mind that that was an option and it did um, appeal to me. But, you know, when I went to university, I studied politics, philosophy and economics. Um, a lot of people go on from that degree to work in government, uh, in NGOs. Um, or, you know, in the city as well, you know, as management consultants. So certainly becoming an entrepreneur or going to a family business wasn't um, obvious at that time. Uh, when I left university, um, my father had sold um, his prior show, EIBTM, uh, to read, and um, he'd set up a uh, coffee shop chain, or the, the aspiration was to become a chain of coffee shops. And initially, you know, that was really exciting to me, you know, to build a brand. And I joined that business. Um, when we sold that a few years later, I then had a complete break, went into the ski season, which I absolutely adored. And, you know, it was only coming back from that that I was trying to work out what to do. Um, um, I was considering doing an MBA and I almost fell into IMEX because one of the team that was on the launch show uh, that was in 2002, so the year prior to the first show in Frankfurt, um, became unwell and I was looking for a job. And so, you know, I just stepped in and said, well, you know, I'll do this for a few months and then I'm applying for my MBA and I'm going to be out of here after the first show. And of course, I never left. So I still joke with um, with her uh, about that, about the fact that I promised her I would leave her to it and never did um, but you know ultimately I found something that I really loved and what was great I think for me was having been in the retail straight catering business with the coffee shops I um, when I found the events business or the exhibition business I really loved that in a way that I never loved the coffee shops and the retail business and so I I was aware because I'd done something else that this was a bit special uh, or special to me and that was really valuable I think. I love that you know I, I when I joined IMAX I felt the same way I, I said to my mom that I thought I'd found my people and 10 years later I'm still here it's a it's a difficult place to leave a difficult industry to leave why would you. Um, so after officially joining IMEX, obviously you were working with our chairman, your dad, um, Ray Bloom, often. So what guidance or lessons did you learn from him that you still lean on today? It's always quite good uh, about being a teacher or mentor. Um, when I was working with him and also just, you know, growing up as well, I think he kind of always took that approach. Um, I think there are three key lessons. Um, the biggest one that was just drilled into me from a really early age was to learn from your mistakes, not to have any regrets. And my mother as well, I remember her saying to me, I just never want you to have any regrets. And not having regrets is not about doing everything perfectly. It's about your mindset and actually learn, seeing every mistake as a learning opportunity. So that's probably the biggest thing that both of my parents just drilled into me. Um, my father as well as, you know, he's very optimistic. And I think I've, I've sort of inherited that optimism, that sort of look to the future. And that's been really valuable in the past year. But just generally, it's really, um, I think it's a valuable skill. And the other big thing is just to treat people with kindness, you know, whether they're the cleaner or the CEO, um, whoever they are, wherever you are, just treat people with respect and kindness. And that's something that he does quite innately. And I I've definitely tried hard uh, through my life to, to, to do that. 
I, I agree with with that. I think Ray is an amazing leader in that sense, um, and you've definitely followed in his footsteps. So that's excellent. Thank you. Um, obviously, you know, being being a family business, uh, you know, it does change the way that you're kind of accepted into the team, I guess. So do you think you faced any difficulties to people respecting your work, especially coming in as quite a young CEO? any overt um, issues. Um, but I think for me, I did always want to prove um, my that I've earned my place in the team. Uh, the coffee shop business was a family business. So I felt the same there. I was very young, I was straight out of university. And I wasn't very much older when I joined INEX. Um, so yeah, I think I think there is that element inside of you that you want to show that you are working as hard as the rest of the team, or in fact, maybe harder, and that you really understand the business. Um, and that, you know, like I said, that you've earned your place. I think that's really, really important. So I, I think it's come more from within rather than being challenged from without. I think the challenges that I faced sort of more broadly um, were more about my youth, actually, and, and, and looking young and, and just being young, you know. And I think that also probably impacted my confidence to do certain things in the early days because, um, you know, you haven't had that experience of learning from all you know you've learned from some mistakes but not um not had that life experience and I think as you get older you learn to listen better you learn to empathize better you learn to be more self-aware and you need all of those skills really to be an effective leader um so yeah so I think I think um the youth aspect um is probably quite a big thing in just you know really feeling that you you have that seat at the table and that you've earned it absolutely and I know um mentorship is so important to you talking about sort of coming up through the years and so could you talk a little bit about your role as a mentor and what you feel you can do and other women especially can do to guide the next generation yeah I've learned to the time how important mentorship is and coaching is and role modeling as well again uh, 10 years ago I probably didn't understand the value of that in the same way that I do today um, I think it is really important either to formally or informally um, role model and, and mentor younger people coming through whether they're women or men uh, to be honest you know I've obviously been lucky enough to be in some formal programs like Fast Forward 15 where I've been a you know formal mentor and that program was so well done it was very professional and it really taught you as a mentor and guided the mentors as much as the mentees and it, it is a very specific skill um, I think um, it's really important for the next generation coming through to be able to see themselves in the leaders. So, you know, for women to see other women um, having a family, leading a business or, or, or not even doing those things, but just doing what it is they want to do, whether it is leading a business or not, that you can make those choices and to be open to help people to work out what their values are and work out what their purpose is and what the choices are they want to make and help people to to navigate that and and that is a skill because you kind of learn over time how to coach people and how to listen to them rather than just tell them what to do and that's a skill that you know I'm still learning but certainly um, I think I'm getting better at as um, as I get a little bit older as well. <laughs> I love that. As, as we get older, we do become much better at the learning and the listening, I would say. Um, I know we've we've all been really inspired recently by Julia Gillard, the former prime minister of Australia, who spoke at PCMA convening leaders earlier this year. And she talked a lot about how she learned to lead with strength and empathy. So I wanted to know what you think are the common traits of successful women leaders and what traits have you leaned on heavily in your leadership journey? Yeah, her session at PCMA was fantastic because it was so authentic as well, wasn't it? And I think to a degree, that's what I've learned over the years. I mean, I've never been a person to have airs and graces um, anyway. Um, so I've always sort of um, had my heart on my sleeve, if you like. But I think that authenticity in leadership is really important 
it does take confidence and strength to lead in that way. It takes a lot of confidence to show your vulnerability. And I think that's something that in business, generally people are learning um, that actually that, that sort of old fashioned leadership style where it's a lot of bravado is not necessarily the most effective. I, I would say it's not effective at all. Although of course there've been very effective, great leaders who I'm sure have, have led in many different ways but I think actually the ability to show your vulnerability and to be honest like truly transparent and honest with your team takes a lot of strength actually it takes more strength than pretending everything's okay so I think that level of role modeling whether it is a, a politician like Julia Gillard or whether it's another person in, in business I think it's really important uh, to role model that not all women do that well um, you know I hasten to add and many men do that well but it's about those leadership traits I think in business today that's what people want to see and I think to attract talent as well you know talented young people want to work in businesses that are that will give them a purpose that give them a voice that are truthful with them about the good bad and the ugly um, and I think that's really really important as a, a leadership trait. I think that's true now more than ever. Obviously, this year has been such a difficult year for the world, um, but women have been disproportionately affected by the pandemic. And according to a recent report by the US Bureau of Economic Research, women are losing out on jobs and business at a much higher rate than men. And C. Nicole Mason, who's the president and CEO of the Institute of Women's Policy Research said, we should go ahead and call this a she session. So how have you worked with and supported the women and the carers within your team as they've dealt with quite extreme challenges? And also, how has that affected you as a working mother? Yeah, you know, it's been very difficult. I always say, you know, to be able to, um, you know, work full time in whatever job uh, and whatever level you, you are um, and have a family it takes a true partnership with your partner, your significant other, or your extended family, you know, whatever that looks like, you know, this whole idea of you can do it all alone, and you can do everything is such a ridiculous myth that actually we really need to quash, because it's just not feasible. So for me, personally, I'm very lucky to have a husband who will take well, he would definitely say more than 50% of the load, you know, of the kids a lot of the time. And, you know, you just have to be honest about that. And, you know, celebrities, when they come on and, you know, say that they travel all over the world and they don't have any help. I mean, it's it's a complete myth. Um, it, it's interesting, isn't it, when this time you see that women still take on the bulk of the load of childcare, homeschooling, uh, and everything that goes with running a family and a household. And that's still really prevalent right across the world. Um, and also women tend to be in part-time roles more uh, or tend to be in roles which are just more vulnerable um, to recession uh, and and so you know it's really difficult to see that For, from our perspective of course more of our team are women than men uh, which is not deliberate um, but it's just the way that we've grown up um, as a business and so being a working mother myself I think has helped me to have empathy with the women um, and indeed the men as well in our team who, who need to find that balance really between their work lives and their home lives and I think we were going that route anyway but we've become much better this year at being confident saying you know what this really matters and we need to help people to have that balance and work in a truly flexible way in whatever way that works for them and I think ultimately it's about trust you know and I think if you can't trust your team members to get their job done then they should be in your team anyway right so at the end of the day it's about you know dealing with the half a percent that maybe uh, show themselves not to be trustworthy rather than dealing with the 99 percent of people who are very trustworthy who if you allow them to actually flex their work hours and work in the best way will give you more uh, than you could ever imagine actually because that trust and responsibility go both ways so that's what we've really sort of 
we're already working towards, but I think we've gone fully that way, you know, have trust in your team, give them that responsibility and, and the people that are worth it, which is generally everybody, if not most people, will repay that to you in spades. Absolutely. And, and I'm somebody who within the company has taken advantage of our flexible work. I have a young son, a 16 month old. And so for me, it's, it's allowed me to be able to continue to work in, for a company and in a job that I'm so passionate about without having to lose that other side of who I am. And I think that that's a real gift that companies can give to working mothers, fathers, carers in general, to be able to say, we want you to to stay here. We, we want to invest in you for the future. And I think it's, um, it's a real testament to IMEX, but it's also going to, going to provide this next generation of children, the opportunity to see that they actually can do it all because they've been given the tools to do it all. Whereas our generation didn't have those tools and we're just trying to, to put it all in to a box that's overflowing. Absolutely. I mean, I remember, you know, last February when you were attending um, EMEC, MPI's EMEC in Seville with Finn and you and, and um, Mark went together and he took the childcare so that you could um, attend the conference. And I remember people in the industry, you know, talking to me and say, oh, that's amazing. But for us, that was like, well, you want to do your work just because your child is two, two or three months old doesn't mean that you should forego that opportunity if your husband is there for you if we're there for you why can't we mix this up why can't we do this in a different way and I was proud that we found a way to achieve that um but it didn't seem so radical to us you know that was just blending it's about that work-life integration isn't it and that blending that's not for everybody of course some people like to go home and have that separation but if you're a person who can only live your life that way you don't want to lose good people because you can't find a way to help them balance that Absolutely. And I think one of the important parts about what you've just talked about is that my husband happens to be a director at IMAX. And so I think that actually really, really showed how much the company is willing to be flexible with that. And I had said to him when we were talking about going to Seville, you know, I think it's a really great example for you to set for your team, for the company, that even as a director, as the father, you're going to take, I mean, he had to take a week off of work so that I could go and do something that I was so passionate about as the incoming chair for EMEC 2022, which will be in Brighton next year. Um, so that was a wonderful opportunity. And I think that was an example of really kind of putting our money where our mouth is as a company. And I just, you know, I appreciated it. Now I'm back and I'm back in a flexible working pattern, which allows me to do the job that I love. This year's International Women's Day theme is choose to challenge. And they've talked about how a challenged world is an alert world and from challenge comes change. So within what we've just been talking about, how are you choosing to challenge as we move into this brave new world? Yeah, I think one of the things that this pause, if you like, has allowed us to do is really think much more deeply and work much more vigorously on that kind of workplace revolution, um, if you like. And so, as I said, you know, we've been moving towards this more flexible way of working. But I, I always saw it as taking baby steps, whereas now we've been able to just go, you know what, this is what we're doing now, you know, uh, we of course we want you back in the office when we can we want people together that's incredibly important but actually recognizing that you can do your work in any hours you can you can blend between working at home and working in the office we're recruiting at the moment it's allowed us to cast our net wider and so we don't need to be in our hometown because you don't need to be in the office nine to five religiously every day um and of course you know we've been um you know, doing that recruitment, really focusing on diversity where we can. So, you know, taking out names um, from the uh, process so that we can, you know, really sort of take out that unconscious bias. Um, and then also, of course, you know, we've been working with John Barnes, who's a um, consultant in helping teams to become more adaptive, more agile, more flexible. And um, there's no way I think in our normal cycles, we would have had the time and energy to put into experimenting with these different ways of working with different team structures. Um, but I think it's been very freeing for us because, and we've learned a lot, you know, we, we've learned that there are some things that don't work as 
well, you know, and that's okay. But we are learning very quickly to work in a different way to give people more responsibility, more authority, more power, really, uh, and to help people communicate much more transparently. And I think when we go back to well, we're just about getting into our back into our normal cycle for IMEX America in November. I think this is going to be really transformative in the way that we need um, to work in the future. I, I couldn't agree more. And I remember um, right uh, just a few months into the pandemic, we had a focus group with some of the parents in our company to talk about sort of what they needed, how, how they could succeed in the best possible way. And one of them said that the, it was the first time they had ever been able to drop their child off at school and pick their child up after school. They'd never been able to do that because they were in the office from nine to five. And, and it changed the way that they worked, that they were able to do that because they actually are able to bring their best self to the office because they're also able to bring their best self to their home and I just think it's such an important thing that we're able to keep some of these small lessons that we've learned this year and grow them into really big changes within the company and potentially within the industry. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And I think, you know, for me, I obviously came back to work very quickly after I had my kids. It was, you know, within two to three months I was back, which for our American audience, I know is totally normal, uh, but it's not so normal, you know, here in the UK or in Europe. Um, and I knew that the only way I was able to do that was by having this blend, by somebody not being on top of me, me not asking permission to go and pick up the kids, but pick them up, start working again, just blend this into my life. That was the only way I could have done my job. And so for me, it was important to try to find a way to allow our team to have that same level of flexibility. And again, it comes back to trust. If you trust people to get the job done, and if they prove to you that they can, then why not allow them to work in a way that gives them that satisfaction as well? Because you have to, you know, it's no point pretending that somebody leaves their home at the door of the office. It doesn't happen to any of us. So we need to be happy in our home lives and our work lives to bring our best selves to our jobs. Uh, and that's really at the crux of it, I think. Oh, I think that's so important. And um, yeah, it makes working a lot nicer, I have to say, in a much more positive atmosphere. So, well, finally, if you were speaking to your younger self today, you know, starting at the beginning of this journey, what would you tell her? And what do you think other young women can learn from your experience? I guess um, it's about, you know, to a degree, having the confidence um, to follow your sort of convictions, to follow your values. Um, I think that's really important. Uh, certainly when I was, you know, a mentor, uh, we talked a lot around values. And, you know, when you're finding a company to work with to make sure that you are in a business that matches those values is really, really important. Um, and, and that also gives you confidence. And once you have confidence, you can do anything. And that's the real, real thing. And not to devalue yourself, not to say my opinion doesn't matter, but to have to have self-awareness in how you um interact with other people how you put your message across that's all really important but at the end of the day your opinion matters and wherever you are in the business or whatever, even if you're entry level you can show your talent by taking that responsibility and putting your hand up and and really pushing yourself forward and people if you're in the right business people will notice you um for that and so I think that's really what I would tell anybody and it is at the end of the day about self-awareness and 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 sort of deep confidence in yourself to put yourself forward and not uh, not wait for somebody to ask you to do something I love that I will take all of that advice so thank you but as always Karina it's such a pleasure to sit down with you for our conversations with Karina series and I look forward to our next one thank you Suzanne